Good evening and welcome to the Cougar Den here at Van Wert, Ohio, where tonight WSN brings you a non-conference matchup in ladies basketball. The Van Wert Cougars tonight will host the Crestview Lady Knights. My name is Mark Shine. It's my pleasure to do play-by-play -play. alongside my good friend Mark Bagley to bring us this game and do a color anal analysis for this one. Mark, kind of an interesting non-conference matchup on Martin Luther King Day. Yeah, this has been an annual rivalry game on Martin Luther King Day, and it's a great matchup tonight between two very good teams, two rivals. Uh, and the Cougars den tonight, so we should have a lot of fun doing this game. Let's take a look at Mark Gregory's Crestview Knights. They come in at nine and three in the conference in the season. They are four and one in NWC play. How about keys to the game for the Lady Knights this evening? Yeah, talking to Coach Gregory about Crestview, they need to limit their live ball turnovers. His goal tonight is less than twelve. Their second key is to box out, rebound, and run. They need to finish the possession, to get the ball, and get out and go. And then their third key is one more. One more pass, be patient on offense to get, to get a great shot. Let's look at the Crestview Lady Knights starting lineup. Then they will go with number three, Macy Colwicky, a 5'6 senior, averaging 3.1 points per game. Number four, Ellie Klein is a 5'5 sophomore, averaging nine a game and 3.3 assists. Number five, Kelly Gregory, 5'10 junior, 21 points a game, six and a half boards, and went over 1,000 points here just recently. And number 10 is Lacey McCoy, 5'9 senior, averaged eight a game and about seven rebounds. And number 21 is Josie Kowicki, a 5'5 sophomore, averaging five points per game. The Crestview Knights score at 51 a game. They give up 42. Mark, your analysis and your keys for the Van Wert Cougars. First for Van Wert, they must defensive rebound. They must control the boards on that end. And then number two, as we all know, Callie Gregory's a great player. They must contain her and force her to get her points with volume shots. And the last one is limit live ball turnovers. Their goal is less than 12 as well. And a Flippo's team are 9-6, and 3-2 and two on the year. They scored at 43.1 a game. They give up 39. Here is the starting lineup for the Cougars. Number one is Sailor Wise. She's a senior averaging 2.9 points per game. Number 15 is Kyra Welch. She is a senior averaging 12.3 points per game and about three steals and three assists per game as well. Number 20 is Sophie Hogg. She is a fifth uh, average at 15 points a game, 4.4 rebounds. She is a senior. She also went over 1,000 points recently. 23 is Maria Bagley. She is a senior averaging four a game. And number 44 is Aaron Schaffelberger. Aaron is a senior averaging six points and six boards per game for her. Our officials tonight will be Steve Oren, John Derryberry, and Kim Egbert. And we have non-conference ladies basketball on Martin Luther King Day for you. We're after this on WOSN. We're back at Van Wert here at the Cougar Den, where tonight WSM brings you the Van Wert Cougars hosting the Crestview Lady Knights. Our scoreboard today is sponsored by Loudix Jewelry, your family-owned and operated jeweler for over 70 years. You can visit them in Van Wert or in Coldwater or online at loudix.com. Mark Shine and Mark Bagley here as we're going through our starting lineups this evening. Our final starter has been introduced. That would be Aaron Schaffelberger, and we are ready for high school basketball here on Martin Luther King Day. This game a year ago, you talked about it being a rivalry game, was won by Crestview 58-40. Callie Gregory had 20 that night. Lisa McCoy had 13, four assists and four steals. Welch uh, had, uh, Kyra Welch had 13, and Sophie Hogg had uh, 11 that particular night. And all those, a lot, a lot of returning players, Mark, for both teams from a year ago. Yeah, Van Wert has five starters that returned, and, and Crestview has a lot of experience as well from a state run. So lots of experience with the four tonight. We'll see early on the strategies that both teams uh, kind of uh, employ to, to take the other strengths away. And John Derryberry tosses, and the ball is heads into the backcourt, and this will be Crestview's basketball. Van Wert starts out in a matchup 2-3, it looks like. Direct a little bit of traffic out front. Here comes a movement outside to get to basketball. That's Cole, uh, Klein. Run a cutter through the baseline, try to overload. And Crestview will be very patient against his zone to try to get the shot they want. And usually that's going to be Gregory. And then McCoy getting the offensive rebound if it misses. This is uh, Josie Kawicki with the basketball, kind of directing traffic a little bit. Coach Gregory handing out some assignments. Ellie Klein will come out and pick up the basketball. Pass now is to Macy Kawicki. And a long, deep three by Kelly Gregory and rebounded on the backside. 
And that's the backside war that Van Wert's yeah. got to win if they play zone tonight. That so far, first shot they did. Crestview starts. Little three zone, is that what they're doing? There's a rebound to come to Gregory. Look out, we're heading the other way. Pass ahead, and to the rim, and finishing with the left hand inside in transition is Ellie Klein. It's like a little 2-2-1 two -two press. And they lob over, and then it's tipped out of bounds by Gregory. They play a little three zone and two man. Was that what they were doing in the last uh, possession? Was it all man? I, I didn't see enough it, of it to know. I, I didn't see enough, but my guess is that they're going to take away Welch and uh, Haug. So it looks like they're chasing both of them right now. A, little, a triangle and two, it appears to be. A little screen out front. Left handed jump shot will bounce around and not fall in. Rebound on the backside, however, by Aaron Schaffelberger. We're tied at two early on. Rebounding was a key for both teams, and Van Wert got their first offensive rebound for a bucket. Lacey McCoy lobs it cross court. Here's a pass down to the baseline to Gregory. This will be a baseline jumper by Colwicky. Bounces around, and who hit it out of bounds? It will stay with the Crestview Knights. Again, that, that's... As you talk about in high school basketball, Mark, I don't care what level or any level, the backside war is the one that you have to win defensively if you want to be successful. You're talking about the ball is shot from the left side of the floor. The right side needs to be able to rebound and control that side of the floor. Absolutely. That, that's the math of basketball. It usually comes to the opposite side. Tried to lob it inside to Gregory. It was tipped loose, and then she wildly threw it out of bounds, just trying to save it, and we're still tied at two. And Welch did a great job fronting that, getting a tip on it, and it went out of bounds for Crestview's first turnover. Sailor Wise, and she will bounce past the basketball up. Cross-court pass goes to Welch. So they're, they're really trying to face guard two, and the other three are just staying in the lane right now more than, more than anything. Schaffelberger has to go get it. Here's a bounce pass inside, and it's tipped away as they tried to find Hogg. Here's a lead pass ahead and to the rim. And finishing will be Lacey McCoy. That's that live ball turnover, Mark, we talked about in pregame. And both teams wanted to avoid that. And that's two points for Crestview. So see Hogg with the basketball. Baseline pass to Maria Bagley. And then she posts it up inside. Welsh working. And so it's going to be important for Ran Van Wert's role players tonight to be able to hit shots. Another turnover unforced. Yeah. Sailor Wise was unable to secure the pass that went a little wildly to the sidelines, and Nellie Klein will inbound. But for both teams, that kind of turnover, dead ball turnover, you can defend. You can't yeah. defend live balls. And that, that's, a, that's both teams. Again, rebounding and turnovers were, were two of their keys tonight going into the game. Gregory makes the pass on top to Colwicky and gets it back. Long, deep three. A little hard. And Klein scrambles into the rebound. McCoy looked at it and then turned it down. Last two possessions, Crestview had offensive rebounds. Push jump shot from the corner by Kowicki doesn't go, but Crestview rebounds. And Gregory gets another look that won't go, and a rebound eventually comes to Kyra Welch, and here she goes. Length to the floor, and we're going to get a foul prior to the shot. First foul of the basketball game. And that's where Welch is her best. She, she is very strong to her left hand. She's played for four years. And uh, that's a great job, you know, getting to the basket there, creating a foul. Macy Colwicky picks up the foul, looking to lob inside, and cannot. It ends up on top to Sailor Wise. And trying to make a move as Hogan cannot. And this is Sailor Wise. So you can see two girls, Mark, are just uh, staying in the lane right yep. now. So other people have to make shots. Penetration dribble, Bagley, and there's a bounce pass. And the new shot um, by Welch doesn't go. Here they come the other way. Here's a deep three. And that one will go. Three ball, Lacey McCoy, and they have, she has five in the basketball game. Her team's got seven. We get our first time out. You're watching high school basketball on WSN.
Crestview Knights uh, run out to a 7-2 lead. It's Hannah Flippo's timeout. She's looking for some way to attack that uh, defense that she's seeing it. It's Mark. Yeah, she is. And Crestview's already gotten up eight shots to Van Wert's four. Uh, a lot of that's offensive rebounds and, and a couple turnovers led to baskets, and that's why it's 7-2. So Van Wert's got to really find a way to get their spacing and attack when, when, when a couple girls aren't being guarded tonight. Uh, and, and Crestview obviously has Van Wert scouted very well. Wise well, looking for somebody to pass it to, and it's tipped loose, and that will be a turnover. Oh, a nice pass cross court. Klein has it. Here's Gregory into the lane. Good save by Klein. Here's Gregory on a flash. Klein for three. And a strong rebound inside by Aaron Schaffelberger. Sailor Wise looking baseline. And that trying to throw the ball across court, just couldn't quite get it there. And when you dribble over the corner against pressure, nothing good usually happens out of that. And it's uh, Van Wert's now turned it four times in the first five minutes of, of this uh, first quarter. JV game tonight was won by Crestview, 29-19. Baseline pass headed to the rim is McCoy. Lacey McCoy with seven early points here, five and a half minutes into this one. Welch tried to spin the lane and could not. And right now, Van Wert's standing a lot. Sailor Wise, three won't go. Bagley hustles into the rebound, tips it into Wise's hand. Here's Schaffelberger in the lane, and a nice move by her. She's got all four points for the Van Wert Cougars. Good hustle play by yep. Van Wert to get an extra possession. Those are the kind of plays they have to make tonight uh, to be successful because early turnovers to put him in a hole. Trapped on the baseline, but the pass got down inside, and Gregory is able to finish with her first basket. And Crestview has figured out the zone right now, and, and Van Wert will probably have to get out of it, especially when Gregory's shooting layups against it. Uh, nice offense by, by the Knights. His baseline pass. Bagley gets a look at 17-foot jumper, and Maria nails it. And those are the shots you got to make if you're not being guarded. And, and you always say when you're open, you got to shoot it. Without hesitation, that time she pulled the trigger. Jump shot in the lane again. Back-to-back -back baskets. Callie Gregory averages 21 a game for the junior. And they made a great adjustment, Mark. They just put Gregory in the middle of that zone and let her go to work. And they're now five for seven from two-point range. Welch spun into the lane. Here's Bagley looking to go to the basket again. Here's a nice bounce pass to Welch. She tried to get that left-handed shot up and gets it blocked out of bounds instead. A couple subs into the game for each team. Oh, first of all, number two, that would be Debbie Jones enters for Van Wert along with, I missed the number there, number 11, I believe, wasn't it? It would be Jordan Blythe. And we'll get the Crestview sub for you in just a moment. It's about as far as Van Wert will go with their subs, and Crestview doesn't play a lot either, so it's going to be... 15, Kennedy Kreider was the one who checked in. She's a 5'9", sophomore, averaging three a game. Under a minute to go in our opening quarter of ladies' high school basketball, Martin Luther King Day. Bagley from 17 feet. She's got another one. She has found that spot on the baseline. And Van Wert's done a good job of finding the open gaps against their defense. Both defenses... Um, you know, started out the way they have, and, and the offense have, have adjusted to how they played. McCoy trying to get inside and cannot. Kowalki ends up with a baseline. Here's McCoy again. Skip pass is who hit it out of bounds. It will go out of bounds, and it will go off of Sophie Hogue. Yeah, and Sophie has good anticipation uh, to get those kind of steals. And one of the things that, you know, she'll learn, too, is as she's a senior, but to use your other hand, she, she opened her body up, and it's hard to get there when you do that. Under 10 seconds to go. This is Klein. McCoy, deep three. Board ball. Welch rebounds, and quarter number one will come to an end. Press your nights on top after one. You're watching High School Basketball on WOSN.
We're back at Van Word. It's 13-8 in favor of the visiting Crestview Lady Knights. Our scoreboard today is sponsored by Loudix Jewelry, your family-owned and operated jeweler for over 70 years. Visit them in Van Wert or in Coldwater or online at loudix.com. 13-8, seven points for Lacey McCoy, four for Callie Gregory, two for Ellie Klein on the other side, four each for Maria Bagley and Aaron Schaffelberger as we go to quarter number two, and the home team will get the basketball first. Both teams got off the slow starts offensively, Mark, but they both kind of figured out the different kind of defenses the other team was trying to play against them. Both teams are scouted very well. This looked more like a straight 1-2-2 two, two and turned it over on the opening possession. This will be Macy Kowicki to inbound. Unforced turnover, but again, for Van Wert, they can guard this now. Looks like Van Wert's going to man-to-man. -to -man. And uh, Welch is guarding Gregory. She's down in the low post right now and just accepted the screen. And that's what she does. She posts up when smaller girls guard her. Nevaeh Ross is in the basketball game for Crestview. She wears number one as Kara Welch rebounds on the backside. She's in a hurry the other way. Here's a pass ahead. Another nice pass. And finishing inside is Jordan Blythe. And that's when Van Wert's at their best. Yeah. Transition, good defense rebound, a nice pass. And... Blythe really is starting to come on for Van Wert off the bench for him. Cuts the lead to 13-10. Here's a pass inside to stolen by Welch. And headed the other way again. Bounce pass down inside. Here's Blythe, gets her shot blocked. And then trying to muscle up inside is Sophie Haug, and she will draw a foul and head to the free throw line. And Mark, that's uh, four offense rebounds for Van Wert right now, and, and they've out-rebounded them eight to five. And that, that was a huge key for them tonight. Gregory picks up her first foul. And 69% free throw shooter leaves that one a bit short. Back into the game will be Lacey McCoy, and she will replace Macy Kalwicki. And that creates matchup problems for Van Wert. Uh, Lacey gives them more height, and they've got uh, two girls inside that can score. Haug, who averages 15 a game, is in the books now with her splitting those two free throws. Here comes Gregory up the floor. The baseline screens. There's Klein. Van Wert switching quite a few screens, except for Gregory. They're staying home there. And Crestview's doing a great job of moving the ball and trying to isolate her. It's four round one motion with Gregory posting up. That was a really well done lob pass to her that time. That was clinic execution by, yeah. by the Knights. Just high enough over the defender, but before the backside help could get there. This is Debbie Jones with the basketball. Welch, back cut. There's Bagley again. She's got three baseline jumpers, two of them from that spot right there. And a really nice pass by Welch, and you get your feet set, and again, you're going to be open the way they're defending Van Wert. Maria Bagley averaging four games, got six already. We're just ten minutes into this one. Here's Klein into the lane. Tried to bounce pass it through the lane, and we're going to get the held ball that should go to the Cougars. Looks like it's staying with the Knights. Or is the arrow wrong? Uh, you're right. It is going to go to, to crush you, isn't it? This is Josie Kowicki checked back in. And here's the pass. Finally gets it lobbed out on top to Kowicki. Gregory now matched up with Blythe. Into the low post she goes. Here's a lot pass inside. Quick turnaround jumper. She's got eight. And we're going to get a timeout. That timeout will go to Crestview Knights. They have just put a basket up on the board. It is 17-13. Crestview, you're watching high school basketball on WSN. We're back at Van Wert. Reminding me to catch Patrick Cameron every Friday night at 10 o'clock on WTLW with all the highlights from high school basketball and other things on Friday evenings on WTLW, followed by a game of the week that will take place. You can Crestview adjusted who they're going to guard a little differently now. And uh, 
We'll see how Van Wert counters offensively. They're trying to run the continuity Van Wert offense right now, but they're struggling to get in the right spots. And with the good defense played on the baseline, what are we going to get? We're going to get a timeout that will go to Van Wert, 5.07 to go. Mark, while we got a moment, uh, we're doing things a little differently in Northwest Ohio with our tournament draw this year, something called the RPI. Can you give a quick explanation of that for our fans? Yeah, last year I, I started getting on Martin's RPI just to see where people were ranked by computer points and strength of schedule and wins and losses. And so this year, uh, the, the Northwest District will be the test uh, district, and the the seeds will be by the computer. Coaches will then put them on the line, one through whatever that may be, Correct. 12, 16. So it takes some of that prep work out. and It doesn't really account for injuries or sickness or anything else. So I'm not sure the coaches are in love with this, <laughs> but we're, we're the, the test run for this uh, program. I do like the computer aspect, but that, it's tough Damn. when coaches' hands the are travel out coming of out of the timeout. The, the problem, of course, is I, I, I think, too, number one is it's all mathematical. It's all done by the computer, and they will, the computer will decide who seed one is, seed two, seed three, on down. And the other thing is, uh, I think because Northwest Ohio is the only part of the state doing it that way, it, it, uh, this kind of sets up two different systems, how we choose our seeds and how they get placed on brackets. We already have two different tournaments, Mark, until the regionals, and now it becomes even more so. Lob pass inside. That's a nice cut and pass, but Gregory missed. She hustled into her own rebound, and then she will be fouled. Is that Welch fouled her, I believe? And, that, and, she, and, and Callie's done a really good job of adjusting to Van Wert's defense. She gets low on her post-ups and really is active down low with her height. That was the first foul of the basketball game for the Cougars. Crestview has just two fouls themselves. Here's a deep three, bounces around. Gregory hustles into her own rebound. And then penetrate dribbled. McCoy looked at it and turned it down. Still 17-13. Coos got back into it playing this man-to-man. -man. Here's a movement inside. How about that? And that's where Crestview was hurt. Van Wert, they're 0 for 7, or 1 for 7 from 3, but inside they have been really efficient in this uh, first half. Kennedy Kreider had her first basket of the game on that uh, catch. A little bit off balance. Still got it off the window to score. And Crestview's defense has Van Wert's offense very stagnant right now. A lot of standing. Bagley looking for somebody, finally finds Welch. She tries to bounce it across, and Gregory makes a steal, but was standing on the end line. So we're halfway through quarter number two. Because Crestview's made little changes, Mark, it's made Van Wert think and, and sometimes get paralyzed in their movement because some people aren't being guarded. As a deep three went up that time from Debbie Jones. I think she might have had a foot on the line. And Klein tries to get in the lane. Solid defense, but the rebound ends up in the hands of Lacey McCoy. That's six offensive rebounds for Van Wert. steal. Head to the rim. And we're going to, oh, I thought we were going to get an and one opportunity as Sophie Hogg went to the rim, but was fouled. Who's the, the call will go against? Looks like Lacey McCoy picks up her first and back to the free throw line. And over her career, that's been one of Sophie's biggest strengths. She's a very good athlete. She's very quick and got the passing lane there. Two for three from the foul line for her this evening as Sailor Wise returns to the basketball game. And splash that one as well. So she's got three points off from the free throw line and it's now 19-15. Kelly Klein will bring the ball up for Crestview. Van Wert's trying to pressure the ball a little harder now so they can't look inside to the post, whoever that may be. And usually it's, it's Gregory right now. Yeah, Gregory, nice bounce pass across the lane and the finish inside. Crestview now 9 for uh, 14 mark from two, and you can see by that kind of shot selection, that's that's going to be a good percentage. Well, Kennedy Kreider has two baskets, and she's about four feet away from the basket on both of them. That was from a great pass. And we're going to get a foul. That one will go against Lacey McCoy. Lacey becomes the first player in the game with two fouls. And Crest has done an excellent job, Mark, of baiting Van Wert into throwing to players that usually aren't comfortable catching the ball where they're at. 
and then it becomes a kind of a scramble situation. So Bamber needs to find out, you know, where players can catch the ball and where they can't to help their offense get a little more continuity. Actually, that foul went to Josie Kowicki, so she has one now instead of two the other way, and we're going to get a foul by Bagley. She'll get to go to the free throw line. Kelly Gregory does become the first player in the game to get two fouls. That's somewhat of an interesting situation for Coach Gregory to deal with. Bagley shoots 57% from the free throw line and bounced that one in. That's point seven for her this evening. Yeah, so Mark will have to make a decision here, and Coach Best, uh, one of the best assistant coaches in the state of Ohio on the bench, to decide to play her or sit her, and right now they're going to play her. And made both of her free throws. Coach's daughters always can shoot free throws. We practice those a lot. There's, there's been some up and downs this year on, that, on the free throw line, so that's good uh, for her to She's got make eight, a couple. Eight in the game. Ties Gregory's leading scorer in the basketball game. Cressy's offense is really, they're going traditional motion, Mark. Block to block and double screen for Gregory. Klein slips inside and she will draw a foul. Ellie Klein will get to go to the free throw line. And that foul goes to Eleven, eleven. Jordan Blythe, just two team fouls in this half for the Van Wert Cougars. Here's Ellie Klein. She shoots 77% from the free throw line. That's why just drilled that one dead center. Both teams have shot very well from the line. There's yeah. only been one missed free throw. I probably just jinxed her. I hope I didn't, but uh, no. Too good a shooter for that. Four points for her in the basketball game. Makes it 23-17. Almost a turnover. Wise looking for some help. And then as the man-to-man -man clears out, brings it up herself. And carry to basketball. Did Sailor Wise. 2.23 to go here before halftime. And it's 23-17 in favor of the Crestview Knights who have the basketball. It'll be a real important last two minutes, Mark, for both teams here. See who wins the last two minutes of the half. Coy looked inside, instead threw it around to Gregory. Gregory trying to get to the rim and cannot. Good defensive play that time. Crestview's ball movement right now and player is really good. McCoy trying to get in the lane, a little runner for her, off glass, fights her own rebound, and going up and finishing inside. Is that Kreider again? I'm looking at it is. Kennedy Kreider has six, looking at seven. And the foul went to Maria Bagley, her first. Chance for a three-point play for Kennedy Kreider. Average is three a game. And being the veteran announcer I am, I did not jinx the fact that she has not missed a free throw on the season. Oh, wow. And they, just made that one. We talked about danger time for Van Wert. It's yeah. right now. They're down nine, and it was four, and it's 5-0 run here. And Cress, who's really figured out Van Wert's defense right now. Through this right on the line. That ball is short. Schaffelberger rebounds. Here's Welch. She gets cut off, and the ball gets tipped out of bounds. Kennedy Kreider hit that ball out of bounds. She has had a nice uh, second quarter here for her team. Yeah, and, and the scouting report for her was a great offensive rebounder and an effort play, and she's done that this quarter. She's been a huge spark for her. Welch wanted to get two shots up, one from the three-point line and one from off the penetration dribble. There she got a shot up that goes a little bit long, and rebound, fighting it back up on the other side of the court. It's Maria Bagley. Had a good basketball game so far for Maria as well. And McCoy has two fouls now. You know, the rebounding part of the game was so important, and, and Van Wert has six offensive rebounds, and Crestview has seven. That's been a big yeah. factor in this game. Ball's a little short for Maria Bagley. She's got eight in the game. Big basket for her team right there. Although they did not put it up on the scoreboard, right? So it was not a basket. It was just two free throw opportunities. Yep. My mistake. And she pushed out that one up, and it rolls in. 26-18. Here's Gregory. 
Van Wert switching everything right now, so Gregory's getting some mismatches inside. Picked up well that time by Welch, who then fronted her across the lane. Here's a lob pass inside, and Welch tips away. And I think it's going to stay with Crestview. I think it does. Right down in front, Jacob O'Neill, our camera person on the floor this evening, as Ellie Klein will inbounds. Cassidy Driscoll up here with us. High at center court here from the very beautiful Van Wert Gymnasium. Actually looks like a team that's content to play last shot. Yeah, eight point lead with, with 40 seconds to go in the quarter. They're content. They've got a matchup they like right now too, I think. It is the beautiful Van Wert Gymnasium, but as an old time guy, I like the one that was downtown. This is the greatest practice gym in the state of Ohio, uh -huh. but it's hard to replace the atmosphere of the old den. Under 25 to go. McCoy just dribbling the ball out front, trying to set up final shot opportunity for her team. Here comes her set. Klein spins in the lane, bounce pass across, and Kreider finishes again. Nine for her all in this quarter on a good pass from Klein. Sailor Wise for three. That's a huge basket at the buzzer. Sailor Wise had not scored in the basketball game. She nailed that one. It'll be a 28-21 lead for the visiting Lady Knights from Crestview as we go to break. You're watching high school basketball on WOSN. Second half action about to get, begin here from Van Wert, where our scoreboard is sponsored by Loudix Jewelry, your family owned and operated jeweler for over 70 years. Visit them in Van Wert or Coldwater or online at loudix.com. Mark Shine and Mark Bagley. Mark, you cut a lot of stat numbers in the opening half. What do your numbers tell you? Yeah, first of the visiting Crestview with 28 points. They were a blazing 11 for 16, Mark, from two. A lot of layups, a lot of post-ups, 69%. Only one of seven for three for 14%, but overall, 52% from Crestview, three of three from the foul line for their 28 points. For Van Wert, they were six of 11 for two for 55%, one of four from three. That last three was a huge one right mm -hmm. before half, 25%. Overall, 47%, which is respectable, but Van Wert's only got 15 shots to Crestview's 23, and a lot of that is because Van Wert has seven turnovers, and Crestview has seven offensive rebounds, and that's been the difference, I think, in the game. Crestview's layups and inside play, and, and Van Wert's turnovers and, and allowing seven offensive rebounds, and that's the difference we have here at half, uh, collectively as a team. Crestview had quarter scores of 13 and 15 for their 28 points. They're led in scoring by Kennedy Kreider. She had all nine of her points in quarter number two. Seven for Lacey McCoy. They all came in the first quarter. Eight for Callie Gregory and four for Ellie Klein. Van Wert Cougars, they had quarter scores of eight and 13 for their 21. They're led in scoring by Maria Bagley. She has nine. They have four from Aaron Schaffelberger, three from Sophie Hug. Two from Jordan Blythe, and that three baskets you mentioned a moment ago from Sailor Wise. But if you look at Welch averaging 12 points a game, Hogue averaging a 15, and they have just three between them, Mark. Yeah, how good Welch really need to get going here for Van Wert to have a chance. The, those two average almost 30 of the 43 points between them. And Crestview's done an excellent job of bottling those two up. But uh, for Van Wert to have a chance to get back in the game, those two are really going to have to do some scoring. It is Cougar ball first here in the second half, and they're looking at a 2-3 zone from... Crestview changed again. Yeah. They changed their defense about four times the first half. Now they've gone to zone. Looked at Schaffelberger inside, but couldn't get it there. And Aaron had done a good job posting up and didn't find her. This will be a three ball to go up for Haug, and that bounces around and doesn't come to into a fruition. And Lisa McCoy tracks down the rebound. Transition run, and blocked out of bounds or foul. Looks like have got a foul. Good run out, that will be a foul, will go against Sophie Haug. And to the free throw line will go Josie Kawicki. 47% free throw shooter on the season, averages five a game with scoreless in the opening half. One of the things you've seen from Crestview guards, their heads are always up, Mark, and they looked ahead there. 
<laughs> a really nice pass and got quickly to the line for two free throws. One thing that's been good tonight for both teams, Crestview's four for four from the line. Van Wert six of eight, so free throw shooting has been very good in the opening half, and that one as well. Pushes the lead to 30-21. Looks like, yeah, Crestview's going 2-2-1 back to a 2-3 match is what it looks like here. Almost a steal. Three on two the other way. And Schaffelberger has to bring it back out front. Welch looked at it. This is Wise for three. Rebound on the inside and put back up with the left hand is Maria Bagley. She's got 11. Again, the keys for both teams. Who's going to rebound the backside? And that time, Bagley got the backside rebound. Each team scored a basket. They scored two points anyway here in quarter number three. Gregory comes off the screen, skip pass, climb. Gregory on a cut to the goal. Here's Klein for three. And strong rebound from Bagley. We're going to get a foul. Oh, we're going to get a held ball situation, so it will stay at this end of the floor. Klein to inbound. Pass, and then we're going to get a foul as Macy Kalwicki snuck inside on the backside and draws a foul for Maria Bagley. Maria's second. The Crestor's, you know, ball and player movement, Mark, has really been outstanding tonight. You can tell uh, they spend a lot of time on that, and, and they've done a good job of finding the open gaps in Barron's defense. High arching free throw. Macy Kowicki averages three points per game. She's made 16 three-point field goals on the season. Missed her first free throw opportunity. Here's number two. And that one goes dead center. The lead's at eight, 31-23. Two one press proven to be a nuisance on this possession. Here's yeah. Welch trying to get it across. It finally does. They were spacing was real tight there, and Crestview did a good job of mixing that up. Bagley bounce pass, but unable to finish inside was Hogg coming the other way. A couple good passes. There's a hockey assist for you and a basket that will go to Josie Kalwicki. Two excellent passes set that one up. Isn't it amazing? You miss a layup on one end, and they Crestview ran right back at Van Ward and shot a layup on their end. Great passing, great running the floor. Double figure lead. Howe gets inside, missed that one, and lost the rebound out of bounds. This will bring, looks like Jordan Blythe into the game. And Van Wert's a little out of sorts right now. They're rushing things offensively and defensively. They're not seeing ball and man, and Crestview is taking advantage. That's what they do. Yeah. Great teams take advantage when, when teams are struggling against certain actions. You, know, you hit that double figure tier and that uh, that's kind of the first tier of you looking at things. Gregory. This is McCoy. She heads to the rim and draws a foul. Good head and shoulder fake and went straight to the goal. That foul will go to Jordan Blythe, her second. McCoy did a really good job of, of jabbing and foot faking, and once Blythe opened up her leg mark, it, she had a wide open driving angle. And the Knights are getting to the line here in the third quarter. Lacey's a 62% free throw shooter. That one goes off to the back of the rim. She has seven points in the game, got all those in the opening quarter, including a three point field goal. And splash that one for point eight. 34-23, here's the 2-2-1 two, two, again. Oh, that's a, picked it up in a bad part of town. Got across midcourt, kind of got in a trap situation and threw it back into the backcourt for an over and back situation. And, and right now, Vaynerts out of sorts right now and uh, Crestview's making them pay and uh, again, that press has affected them. Kolwicki inbounds to Klein. And to Josie Kolwicki. Gregory powers up inside. She now has 10 points in the game. There's a turnover. Here's McCoy headed the other way. 
Pass to Klein, and they got score in transition again. Ellie Klein has six, and that's going to be a Hannah Flippo timeout. Crestview has run out to a 15-point lead at 38-23. You're watching high school basketball on WOSN. We're back at Van Wert. Crestview with an 8-2 run here in this quarter. Actually, it's a 10-2 run here in this quarter. Take a 15-point lead. See if Cougars can regroup after timeout number three in the basketball game. Changed the zone again, didn't they? Yep, they went back to man-to-man, -to -man and Van Wert really needs to get some player movement and ball movement right now. They've really become stagnant, a lot of one-on-one -on -one stuff. Blythe tries to hand off inside. The Welch, right. yep. They're just collapsing on Welch and Howe. Big basket by Sailor. Sailor Wise now has made two threes. Each of them been coming to pretty critical time periods. That cuts the lead to 12. That's huge shot. Yep. Sailor's hit two of those tonight. She has had to 10 of those in the season before this evening. She got 12 now. Here's Gregory inside, and her ball stripped loose. McCline's able to get it. And lobs it out front to McCoy. Skip around. Macy call Wiki, and then Gregory gets a three. McCoy rebounds the backside. Gregory inside, and we're going to get a held ball. Between her and Welch, it will go to Van Wert. That's what Van Wert needs to do. They need to scrap a little bit. They did that that possession. Some loose balls and, and got a tie up there, but you can't make up a 15-point lead in, in one possession. It's got to be slowly. And, Crestview's press has done a good, great job of slowing Van Wert down. Another Ball's turnover. A little bit long. We're headed the other way. This was Josie Kowicki pushed it to McCoy, and they were going to set their offense now. McCoy works into the lane. Skip pass around. And to the rim, unable to finish inside is McCoy. Welch throws it up ahead. Oh, can't finish. Gets her own rebound, and ball will go out of bounds off of Crestview. Yeah, and Sophie Haug is grabbing her head now. Right now, she's really frustrated. She's just sped up a little bit, and uh, it happens, you know, to, to really good players. Sometimes things don't go your way. You got to keep on fighting through it. And Some, sometimes you try too hard, right? Yeah, and she really is right now. Yeah. Now she gets a three look. That may get them going. So Kihau had 12 of those before tonight. She had three points in the open half. She has six now. That was a big basket. Cuts the lead to nine. And that may get her going. Get a look at a three like that and bury it. Yeah, Crestview's trying to get some space here, and Van Wert's trying to cut it to, you know, six or eight before the end of the third quarter. Klein's left-handed shot does it go. Kennedy Kreider missed that opportunity, and she and Bagley will have a held ball situation. Stays with Crestview. Kennedy Kreider had nine, has nine points, all in quarter number two. And most of them on similar shots to that one, it wouldn't fall for her. That's 10 offensive rebounds for Crestview now. Mm -hmm. Gregory into the lane, pull up from 14. And the rebound to Blythe, and we got bodies on the floor. It's stolen. Gregory gets a three, a two look from the baseline and rolled it in. Well, Callie Gregory has had two baskets in each quarter for 12 tonight. Bagley goes to the rim, gets cut off. Here's Welch for three. And you saw that. Kyra had to rush that shot. She had height running on her. She didn't get her feet set, and it was really short. And that's when, when you have athletes run at you, it becomes very difficult. Each of these teams have huge conference games on Thursday night. Jefferson goes to Crestview. Jefferson's 4-0 in the conference play, 13-1 overall. And Van Wert goes to uh, Ottawa Glandorf on Thursday night, and they are 13 and 2, 5 and 0 in their conference. So each school has a huge uh, conference matchup this Thursday night. Crestview, Gregory comes off a screen but can't get open. There's a nice bounce pass inside, and Kreider missed that one, gets her own rebound, and goes up again. And it will be out of bounds to Van Wert. One forty-seven to go. Uh, 
Hauk looked inside, couldn't get it there. Here's Welch, Bagley. Hayward Space is all bunched up right now. Made a couple of those this evening, but not that one. Here comes Gregory pushing it the other way. She just has a really good command of where everybody's at, where everybody should be, and running the offense. She hadn't forced anything tonight. Spent the whole time that time dribbling up the floor with her head up, looking for a teammate. This is Nevaeh Ross. She just gave it up to McCoy. A couple of nights getting a break right here. Here's Kreider and McCoy. Here's Ross. The ball will kick out long, but Nevaeh Ross runs it down. At 5-2, she gets the rebound. Here's a pass inside to Gregory. Good patience, Gregory inside. Baseline move off glass, nope. And it's been tipped out of bounds that time by Welch. That was a clinical offensive for Crestview. The ball went side, middle side, skip pass, layup, offensive rebound. And right now, Van Wert's is spinning defensively because the ball is moving so fast. And they can't be in position to rebound, so this gives Crestview more possessions. Execution was really good on that possession, and the Knights maintain possession with 34 and a half seconds to go. Here in our third quarter. Josie Kalwicki had the basketball on top, and now Callie Gregory. Almost a steal. Macy Kalwicki headed to the rim and, and got cut off. And Sophie keeps on going with the wrong hand, and that's it's hard. You have to be really ahead of the ball if you go with the open hand. And Cressy's doing a great job of executing here at the end of the quarter. Gregory, time running down. McCoy inside, layup finishes. That was about as good an end of quarter possession as you can have. Points at nine and 10 that time for Lacey McCoy. And her team will take a 42-29 lead after three. You're watching high school basketball on WOSN. Back at the Cougar Den here at Van Wert. Our scoreboard tonight has been presented by Loudix Jewelry, your family-owned and operated jeweler for over 70 years. Visit them in Van Wert or in Coldwater or online at loudix.com. Mark Schein and Mark Bagley, a 14-8 quarter for the Crestview Lady Knights. Makes it 42-29 as we head to the fourth. His first couple minutes of this quarter will be huge if Van Wert's going to get back into it, Mark. They're trying to run the continuity of Van Wert offense right now. Welch looking for somebody under good defensive pressure. Schaffelberger looked at one from the corner, didn't take it. And Crest is knocking down every cut, making every cut difficult for Van Wert. And, and they don't have enough time to be real patient, but uh, they're trying to execute off that. Back cut, and the ball is lost out of bounds. Was there contact? There was not. It will go over to Crestview. And Crestview's pressure man-to-man -man has really bothered them this half. Lots of uh, turnovers, and, and Crestview's gotten transition and really done a good job playing to their strengths. Here's Gregory over midcourt against the trap. She dribbles right around. Here's a bounce pass. That shot's blocked by Bagley and will go the other way. Bounce pass, Bagley, and Maria can't finish under pressure. Gregory rebounds. They were did everything right there. They, 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 got, a, they got a possession and just missed the layup. Lacey McCoy with the basketball. And Crestview's going to spread Van Wert out right now. Van Wert's got a pressure to get back in the game. They're going to spread him out. Looking, looking, looking. Almost a five count. And what? Did we get a timeout? I think we did. Mark Gregory got a timeout. 6.42 to go here in the game. You're watching high school basketball on WOSN. We're back at Van Wert. Uh, Coach Mark Bagley, you mentioned a moment ago that they're knocking off cutters when they come through the lane. What, whoa. For our uninitiated fans, what's knocking off cutters mean? So usually when, when you get ball side, help side, when you, if you get in help side and position, 
th there is within reasonable contact to use your right or le left arm to knock the cutter down uh, without extending your elbow up to the head and head neck area. Um, and it's part of high school basketball. Yep. Now, whether it's right or wrong, <laughs> the game has become so, more physical at all levels. If, and, I'm and, if I'm away from the ball and cutting to the ball, the defense is kind of throw a little body, maybe a little hip in, a little elbow, maybe a little shoulder in just to knock them off a little bit off their stride and where they want to go uh, on the floor. Yeah, and, and offensively, you counter by a hard jab high and go low, avoid the contact, and it's almost like a backdoor cut where you can alleviate the pressure. Pass is stolen off a good pass. Nope, McCoy is able to keep it up, and then she goes up and gets her shot blocked by Schaffelberger, and we get a held ball that will stay at this end of the floor. McCoy's aggressiveness in this half has been a huge factor, too. She's, she's been in a lot of plays, finished that third quarter, a lot of tied balls. She's been everywhere. There's Ellie Klein coming off a screen, and she gets a little runner in the lane, and Schaffelberger comes in and rips the rebound away from everybody. Here's Sailor Wise. And we're needing some points. That was a really good uh, rebound by, by Schaufelberger there. Sailor Wise looking for somebody. Finally finds Kyra Welch on top. Done an outstanding job on Kyra tonight. Gregory, uses those, or McCoy uses those long arms to get the rebound. Here's Gregory. Pass ahead. And Klein gets defended very, very well and can't score, but nope for Gregory, and we're going to go the other way. It's two on two. Sophie Hogg got into the lane and lost the basketball. And that's, Cressu's transition yeah. was really good there. And you could see her frustration. Yeah, it's, it's really come out tonight. And against good teams, you got to move on to the next play. And Defense got back in time, and she wasn't able to get to the rim cleanly. And both teams are getting a little tired right uh, now, too. I was going to say the exact same thing. Klein gets it stolen from here by Welch. Two on one the other way. Kyra Welch right hand, and she will draw a foul from Lacey McCoy. That will be Lacey's third foul. She's the first player in the game to get to that point. Now, it hasn't been a lot of fouls in the game, Mark. No, it, for, got, uh, for as physical as it's, it's gotten yeah. here, there, there has not been a lot of fouls called. And, a veteran crew here tonight, uh, refereeing our game. Welch, who has not scored the basketball game and remains that way as her free throw bounces out. And I think coming into this, Coach Gregor and Coach Best knew that she was the key to the Van Wert's team, running the show and doing things, and they've just done an outstanding job of bottling her up tonight and frustrating Kyra. See if the left-hander can finish that one, and that one also bounced out. I missed them both the same way. Yeah. Here's Gregory. Gregory into the lane, kick out. This three ball is going to go up from Macy Kowicki. It's long and was hit out of bounds by Josie Kowicki on the backside. And, and that was a, another great play there, um, you know, by, by, by uh, Gregory getting into the lane and making the right play. She's made the right play a lot tonight for Crestview, which she could have taken plays herself. Well, it's because of flare screen. Now she tries to get inside and cannot on solid defense. There's always three guys, if you watch that, Mark, when she drives <laughs> yeah. in the lane watching her. They know that she likes to go left, and, and they have three guys waiting for her right there in the lane. They see Colwicky picks up her second foul. Here's Welch. Schaffelberger trying to post up inside, and the pass is a little long. Bagley gets it, and Maria finishes. She's got 13 in the game tonight, having a really good offensive game. Nine in the opening half, four in the second. That's Van has got to be scrappy right now to get it back in it. McCoy goes baseline, kicks it back out to Gregory, and now Klein. Gregory back cut. Wow, was that well done. And that, did you see that, Mark? We talked about that. Face guard, she had an arm bar on her, and just went back cut. Here's Bagley again. Pass, and Sophie Howe can't finish in the lane. Gregory rebounded that one. Another good look for Van Wert, and just, uh, again, lots of missed layups tonight. And again, fatigue is causing, it. when you don't play a lot of girls, uh, that's what happens. They, they've gotten really tired. I think both teams look like they could use a, a bit of a break. Here's another back cut. This time it's Klein trying to get it loose. 
Skip pass around. McCoy goes inside. A little scoop pass. Nice defensive job, but she scrambles into her own rebound. There's Klein. I, I think both teams need a timeout right now. And, and I think Coach Gregory saw that too, Mark. Well, Mark, while we got just a minute, you and I are going to be back in this gymnasium for a pretty interesting basketball game on Friday night. Yeah, it's become uh, over the years a rivalry between Otto Glandorf uh, and Van Wert, and this year is no different. Last year, I think, was a two-point game, and two years ago, this gym, Van Wert upset uh, Otto Glandorf. And although Van Wert's out of the league contention now, this should be an outstanding game. Two veteran teams coming in Friday, looking forward to having another game here in the den. Uh, so, again, the Western Buckeye League is shaping up to be you thought going in four or five teams, but it looks like it's going to be de defiance at Otto Glandorf in early February for the league title. Unless something changes between now and then, um, and, it, it, you know, the top half of the league is very strong again this year. It is, and, and the thing you got to look at is if you're OG coming in here, uh, this is a place you could get upset if you don't play really, really well. It is. Even though there's not a great home court environment here uh -huh. because it's so big, uh, OG over the years have struggled a little bit in this gym. It's a little bit bigger court. The spacing is different. Um, and obviously, we know how many teams have struggled in their gym. <laughs> yeah, So, it's, yeah. It, you know, it's, it's interesting to match up, and it should be a really quality game. And, and OG's looking at their wounds a little bit coming off that loss to Lima Senior from Saturday night. Van Wert almost got that out of bounds, even though Chris <laughs> called a timeout. Good, pretty good idea. Go there and see if the official handed the ball to you. And now we're trying to get a lady knight over there to inbound it. Here we go. John Derryberry and Steve Warren. It's hard uh, to get yeah, anything past great. those two. <laughs> <laughs> Although I can't wait to talk to them about this. Gregory. I'm sorry, it's not Gregory, that's McCoy. Gregory will cut off the screen. Similar and size. Post up inside and fights for a rebound and slams it off a of Cougar. And that's 15 offensive rebounds for Crestview. That's That was one of the keys to the game and the storyline. They've really, Crestview has made the effort plays this half to give them that, that comfortable 13 point lead right now. The Lima Senior Ottawa Glandorf JV game Saturday night was interesting. Here's McCoy inside. Spin move. Nope. Rebound to um, Jordan Blythe. The game was over. Both teams were off the floor in the locker room. Officials were gone. Everything, and they decided the score was actually tied, and OG had not won. They brought him out of the locker room, made him come back out and finish, and Lima Senior won the basketball game and the JV game after being in the locker room. Well, that has to be a first. So. Uh, so there must have been a discrepancy between the official book and the and the away book. So I, the, I've, the I've difference was the, the scoreboard had was had a score up incorrectly. They had given one point to OG that actually belonged uh, to Lima Senior, and so they finished the game tied. But the scoreboard said the other way there had been a, a, a two point victory. So you take one away and add one, and it's tied at 40. And brought everybody back out of the locker room. And I, I was uh, let's just say the lady was out sweeping the floor. Uh, anticipating the, the warm-up for the varsity game, and they brought both teams out of the locker room. So, Well, there's a first for everything. Yeah, that's what I, the first time I've seen that one. I have not. I have seen a few basketball games, and I think you have too. Absolutely. Here's Crestview with a very patient possession this time. Yeah, look for them to really put this yeah. thing in the in the deep freeze here. And there's not many fouls right now, so Van Wert's going to either have to foul or, or hopefully Crestview takes a bad shot for them to get back in the game. But right now it's a – Experience. A lot of people played on their state team last year, and, and so they're well coached, and, and they're going to hold the ball as long as they need to. Step through that time, and we're going to get a Crestview timeout. This will be our final timeout of the basketball game. 152 to go. You're watching high school basketball on WOSN. We're back at Crestview. We remind you that there's a fee for us to broadcast this particular basketball game, and we'd appreciate if you would donate to help support the athletics and other programming on WTLW WSN. You can go to WTLW.com backslash donate and donate anytime, 24 hours a day. Crestview no, with their final timeout. Go ahead, Mark. And you know, the, these, the end of these kind of games are really important for league play. Both teams play a great team on Thursday night. Man, we're going to Otto Glandorf, and Crestview playing Delphus Jefferson is an excellent team. Right to the rim and scoring is Josie Colwicky. She has six in the game now. 
So these end of game situations, you know, can really be a springboard to the next, you know, the next game. And and so Van Wert needs to try to execute here the last couple minutes of the game. Shot goes up from Jones. That doesn't go. Bagley is fouled on the backside. And although it probably doesn't matter at this juncture, Lacey McCoy now has four fouls. Maria Bagley, 13 in the game. She is three for four from the free throw line this evening. Seniors had a good basketball game this evening. And that ball rolls off the front of the rim for her. Some subs into the basketball game. Looks like uh, Haley Owsley will enter. Kennedy Kreider, Haley McCoy. Kennedy Kreider will enter. Nevaeh Ross is in. So Coach Gregory has emptied his bench here. And that one will go. Maria Bagley has 14. That ties game scoring honors with Callie Gregory this evening. And it's always good to, at the end of the game to get, get subs in. They've worked hard and practice all week long, too, and Van Wert start to empty their bench now here to, to finish up. Looking on the sideline. Kenneth Deering is in a, ready to check into the basketball game on the far side. Debbie Jones is already in. This is when a good yeah. referee stops the game. Yeah, that's right. Fortunately, the ball got knocked out of bounds to get these people in. Here's Kenda Deering in, number 42, is that correct? I'm looking at number 42. I don't have a 42 on my roster, Mark. I will apologize to that one. Pass out high, that uh, ends up Crestview. Kreider with the basketball. Haley McCoy with the basketball, and then Ross. Yeah, 42 is Claire Benner. She, Thank you very much. Van Wert got new uniforms uh, oh, courtesy of Alley Clifton, so Claire Benner's uh, new uniform is 42. I did have a 42 and a 24 on my book, and I missed the 42. Thank you very much for clarifying that. And we are very appreciative to Alley Clifton for what she provided to our Here's girls' program. Three ball that would go up and rattle around. Rebound comes down the backside to Deering. Sophomore guard. This is Alea Blackmore. Freshman looks inside, good pass. And we're gonna get a foul. And headed to the free throw line will be Debbie Jones. Jones rattles her free throw in for her first point of the evening. And makes the second one as well. Six point, six and a half seconds to go in this one. And Nevaeh Ross will rock it up. Our final score tonight will be the Van Wert uh, Cougars will end up with 34 points this evening. And the Crestview Lady Knights will end up with 46. And where it will drop to nine and seven on the season, three and two in the Western Buckeye League. Crestview will go to 10 and three. They are four and one in the Northwest Conference and each of them had big games coming up. Mark, your final thoughts on this one? Yeah, I think for both teams, as you head toward the middle of January and into late season play, it's gonna make both teams better if they use this game right. I, I think for Crestview, their ball move was excellent tonight. They got a little fatigued late, but their offensive rebounding and just overall team play was excellent and, and well-deserved victory for the Crestview Knights. For Van Wert, again, trying to, to find out, uh, you know, when teams take away their two best players with, with Sophie Haug and also with Kyra Welch, how do you respond to that? And some, some girls stepped up tonight and some others, you know, will continue to do that. But if, if you use this kind of game right, a rivalry game, it can make it better and, and as you head toward tournament time. I think we'll see when we look at quarter scores how the fatigue played in a factor in this one. Van Wert quarter scores, 8-21, excuse me, 8-13, 8 and just 5 in the fourth quarter. Crestview, 13, 14, 15, and just 4 in the final quarter. I think fatigue has showed up by the time we got to quarter 4. And that's right, and, and, and we saw it tonight. A lot of missed layups, a lot of uh, loose balls inside, and. And again, on a Monday night, Martha the yep. King Day, sometimes with no school, those kind of things happen too. That's true. Maria Bagley led Van Wert in scoring tonight. She had 14.
Callan Gregory had 14, Lacey McCoy 10, Kennedy Kreider had nine, all in quarter number two for the Crestview Lady Knights. Hey, you got a great athletic director here. Mr. Trent Temple did a great job of putting this one together for us. We appreciate our crew here in the gym this evening, Jacob O'Neill and Cassidy Driscoll, and back at the station, it will be all edited together by Megan Sherrick. The Crestview Lady Knights come in with a 46-34 victory over the Van Wert Lady Cougars. You've been watching high school basketball on WSN.